Hello, welcome, welcome. You must be here for a reason, right? Probably want to learn more about fishing? Either to increase your skill levels or a way to make profit. Now, either way or whatever reason you have, you've come to the right place. Now let me start you off in your journey towards fishing. Just like any other skill in Skyblock, you need experience to increase your fishing levels. You can go about it in two ways. First, you can either manually fish, or you can make your minions do all the work for you. Now, using minions to increase your fishing skills will take a long while. It's more of a supplementary thing rather than a main thing. Now, if you're just starting fishing and don't have that high of a skill level, the only rod that you pretty much need for now is a normal vanilla fishing rod, as well as your normal damaging armor to deal with the sea creatures that you fish up. But if you want to start off pretty easily, you can just buy beginner fishing armors. Now, there's two sets that you want to keep in mind. The first is the angler armor set, which gives 4% sea creature chance as well as minus 30% damage from sea creatures if you have the full set equipped. It also increases your HP in proportion to your fishing skill. While another set that you want to keep in mind is the Salmon Armor set. Now this set doesn't really have that much of an ability compared to Angler Armor. But what Salmon Armor gives is 6% chance for sea creatures as well as more health and more defense. Now you want to mix and match this with a Water Hydra Head if given the chance. As the Water Hydra Head gives more sea creature chance, more health and more defense in comparison to the normal Salmon Helmet. Of course, it would disable the armor set skill, but that's pretty negligible by itself. Now, since they're pretty cheap, I suggest you keep both armors on hand. You can test out how much damage sea creatures are dealing to you. Now, if you're surviving with the salmon armor and the water hide your head, then it's more than enough to keep it. But if you can't deal with the sea creatures, then it's better for you to equip the angler armor. Now as for reforges, you can either go pure if you want 100% critical chance, or fierce if you have more than enough crit chance. Same goes with the salmon armor. When you reach fishing level 10, that's when you can start going for the better rods. Now once you've reached level 10 in your fishing skill, you can either equip a winter rod or a challenging rod. They have pretty much the same stats, while the winter rod is much better to be used in the winter island. The challenging rod, it's a much better all-around rod. So take your pick. Now that you have your fishing gear in the ready, just fish normally as if you would in normal Minecraft. Just cast your hook with a right click, wait for the water particles to go by your hook, and right click again to hook it all up. Pretty simple right? Now that you have the basics down to a path, just continue grinding fishing until you reach your desired skill levels. Now a quick look to the baits you may want to use. Now fishing bait increases your catching time by 30%. A downgraded version is a minnow bait, which only increases it by 15%. If you want more sea creatures, you can try with a spike bait. Now, as for the whale bait, it's quite expensive, but it actually gives the benefits of all other baits, as well as increasing the chances of rarer sea creatures to be hooked up. Now, there's also a couple of event-specific baits. Now, the spooky bait gives you more chances to hook up or catch spooky sea creatures which spawns when the fear monger is in the hub. Now for the ice bait, 
it gives you more chance to hook up or catch winter sea creatures in the winter island. Now the shark bait gives you more chance to catch sharks during the fishing festival. Incidentally, Mayor Marina is in power for this Minecraft year, which means during the start of a Minecraft month, fishing festivals are held for about an hour. Well, exactly an hour. Now for that hour, you can fish up sharks, which gives good loot, well, relatively good loot, as well as relatively better fishing experience in comparison to normal sea creatures that you can fish up. With Marina as the mayor, it is arguably the best time to level your fishing skills. Let's talk about sea creatures next. Sea creatures are the best way you can get fishing experience while fishing. To check out your list of sea creatures, you can go to your SB menu, under your skills, then go to fishing, and just click the sea creature guide, and it will show up the list of all available sea creatures, and the requirements you need to fish them, or catch them while fishing. Or better yet, you can just type slash SCG short for sea creature guide and it will pull the guide right up as you level your fishing skill you gain access to more and more sea creatures with higher rarity better drops as well as higher fishing skill experience now some of the sea creatures are only accessible at certain times during events or even need certain baits to be catched by the time you're fishing higher rarity and stronger sea creatures, upgrading your beginner fishing gear is a pretty good idea. If you've been using angler armor or salmon armor, you might notice that even higher or stronger sea creatures is actually pretty manageable. Of course, you might die once or twice since they will deal pretty substantial damage. Or if you don't find yourself dealing that much enough damage to them, it means you also need to upgrade your weapon. Personally, my armor progression goes from angler armor directly to the shark scale armor. My reasoning for this is, as I was already aiming for endgame fishing gear from the start, wasting money and time on diver gear when I'm gonna replace it almost immediately anyway is just a waste. Of course, if you want to use diver armor, it's still a pretty good armor set as it doesn't have that much of a difference from the chart scale armor. Well, of course, besides the stats that it gives. Our end goal for the fishing rod is to get a rod of the sea, as it is currently the best fishing rod available in the game. The rod of the sea actually has a pretty decent seer progression. It comes from the Rod of Legends, while the Rod of Legends comes from the Rod of Champions. And the Rod of Champions surprisingly comes from the Challenging Rod that you may or may not have been using as a beginner fishing rod. What fishing pet should I use? If you're just starting out, using your normal combat pet is more than enough to deal with the sea creatures that you've got. But as you get more and more into fishing, getting a fishing specific pet would be the best idea. If you want more sea creature chance as well as increased fishing speed, you may want to get a dolphin pet and at legendary rarities, it stuns the sea creatures that you caught for 5 seconds, making them easier to deal with. If you want to go solo, you can try for a flying fish pet. Now, if you have a diver armor equipped, it also boosts your stats. And lastly, for the squid bet, it's pretty multi-purpose. You can use them for money making with the double amount of drop that you get from squids, or by increasing your fishing XP. Now, this is usually used in tandem with the flying fish and dolphin bet. How does it work? Well. You first equip your flying fish or dolphin for the sea creature chance and faster catch times. 
after you've caught a substantial amount of sea creatures. And just before they despawn, you switch to your squid pet, or your legendary squid pet to be more precise, and that's when you start killing them. Now since you have your legendary squid pet equipped, the fishing XP boost comes in, giving more experience from the sea creatures than you would normally get from just killing them if you have the flying fish or dolphin pet equipped. And finally, it's time to make a tour of the more famous fishing spots in Skyblock, the so-called Isben Pond, made famous for the amount of Isben Slayer bosses that were lured in hopes of killing the fishermen in the area. The Park Lake, one of the better areas for beginners to fish in. It's pretty easy to find a lobby with the rain, making it easier to catch fish faster, as well as the increased amount of squids that you can fish means that you can have a pretty decent profit after a while. The Fairy Lake. Nobody really fishes here. Well, unless you're waiting for the dark auction to start. The Fisherman's Lake. Well, nobody really fishes here. Unless you want to fish up clay for some reason. The Mushroom Island Pond. For some reason, people tend to fish here. I really have no idea why, but they do. Of course, you can also fish in your private island, not that it's the best place to fish since the sea creatures doesn't really give any fishing experience. Oh yeah, here's a picture of the Jerry Pond, directly taken from the wiki because I forgot to make a footage out of it, and it only opens in certain times. And lastly, the Treasure Hoarder Cave Lake. Now this is a fairly new area that came with the Dwarven Mines update. The bad thing with this area for fishing is there's treasure hoarders about, which is not safe for beginners. And although you can rarely fish up some treasure right, the hassle and effort in fishing in said area is really not that best. That's pretty much everything you need to know about fishing. They're pretty repetitive anyways. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. Now have fun! <laughs>